July, a new month and new batch of poems. The 1st of July, Remembered Morphe's Beard Now by Philippa Dar. On the 1st of July 1858, Charles Darwin presented his and Alfred Russell Wallace's theory of evolution to a London scientific society. The presentation led Darwin to write on the origin of the species, cementing his place in the history of science and our understanding of ourselves. Not everyone in Victorian times found it easy to accept that man shared a common ancestor with apes, nor that we were not created by God. And obviously, being from Shropshire, and most of you, um, Charles Darwin, one of the most important people that ever lived, um, is from Shrewsbury. Um, his house is still up the mount. Near um, Frankwell, if you drive through. So, it's not just me that came from there. Remembered more for his beard now, bushy and white, a touch of Father Christmas on a face as stern as sandpaper, taking no prisoners, never young, misremembered as having stated that man is distended from apes, causing some to query why it is that the mating pair of gorillas at the, ro at the Royal Zoological Gardens has yet to give birth to a young accountant. When reminded that his actual conclusion is that we shared a common ancestry with apes, there is outrage in SW19, where the only thing common about them, or so they claim, is to be found as a patch of greenery in Wimbledon, since overrun with wombles. Rev reviled by those of faith, or those who hide behind it, Darwin is also needled by those scientists who question his assertion as to the survival of the fittest, but soon his theories evolve into the accepted norm, trampling detractors on the foot, the weak protestations making one final gasping breath, when, the behest, behest of Her Majesty's Royal Mail, his home village of Down evolves into Down with a tail, in the form of a letter E, Darwin stands firm, his residence Down House remains unchanged. Not unlike a dinosaur with eyes tight shut, a clawed finger in either ear and a humming loudly, he attempts to postpone the inevitable simply by denying that he can see it coming, yet down house with no e it remains to this day, to the victor the spoils. Closer inspection of Darwin's portraits reveal kind eyes, humanity amongst the facial hair, like the white-haired god of Sunday school, both worshipped by different congregations, forever and ever, Charles Darwin.